Hi everyone, this is your Chapter 9 quiz review for Algebra 1B. I am trying a new method of doing this. I'm using the same app that I used to do the notes video last week. So um, hopefully this goes okay. You can give me some feedback on it in class tomorrow and just suffer through the awkward pauses as best you can. Okay, let's start with number one. Is the number E rational or irrational? Remember that E is equal to about 2.718, da 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 keeps going on and on and on forever. It's kind of like pi. Numbers like that are what's known as being irrational numbers, okay? Irrational numbers are decimals that go on and on forever. A rational number is a nice clean decimal, like 2.5, okay? So E is, in fact, irrational. Okay, let's look at the second question. Suppose $500 is invested in annual interest rate, blah, 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 blah. The word I want you to see here that's important is continuously. Okay? As soon as you see that something is happening continuously, I want you to pull out that PERT formula. Okay, remember PERT is, whoops, P-E to the power of R-T. Okay, so that's any time you see continuously. So for our purposes, the P is the $500. That's what I'm investing. So I would say A equals 500 times E to the power of the interest rate, which is 3%. I'm going to put that as a decimal, 0 0.03. Here, let me get rid of some of this. Okay. Okay. Let me try that again, 0 0.03, because remember with the, um, the continuous interest formula, you do have to move the decimal point, but you don't have to mess around with the 100%. And then my time is five and a half years, so times 5.5. And as a final answer for that, when you type it into your calculator, you should end up with 589 dollars and if you round it it comes out to 70 cents okay onward to number three um number three is asking you to sketch a graph so i know right away that i'm going to need to draw a graph and if this is an exponential function i really only have two choices Okay, I'm going to draw them both, and then we'll decide between them. So I could have a function that swoops down to the right like this, or I could have a function that swoops up to the right like this. And I just have to decide between the two. The way you tell is you look at this right here, the, the growth factor. Okay, The B value is what tells you which one you're looking at. If you have a B value that is bigger than 1, so that's like over 100%, that would be growth. And if you have a B value that is less than 1, that would be decay. So looking at this, if B is between 0 and 1, that means we're dealing with one of these situations. We're dealing with a graph where the, B, the growth factor is less than 1, and if you think about that, a factor that's less than 1 would be like 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is 80%. So if you're only keeping 80%, then you're losing some. Okay, so that's how we know it's decay. So that means my final answer for this would look something like this. It's going to start up high. And sorry, I made my pen really thick, but it's going to swoop down to the right like that. Okay. As long as you can get that picture in your mind, you're okay. And just make sure that you do not cross the x-axis. Okay? Okay, graph this function and label at least four points. I'm going to do that on my calculator, and I know you can't see me doing it, but I'm going to go to y equals, type this in exactly as it's written. So y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x, and then I'm going to look at my table. I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse of what my table looks like. So from my calculator, I take some negatives as well. I have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 
1 and 2. That should be plenty. And then here I have negative 0.75. Oh, sorry, that's not negative. I'm reading wrong. That shouldn't be negative. 1.5. 3, 6, and 12. And I'm just going to take those points and put them on my graph as best as possible. So negative 2 and 0.75. Now, it's really hard to see on my screen. I don't know what it looks like on yours. But um, negative 2 and 0.75 would probably be about here. Oh, that's actually probably a little high. Sorry, my pen's really thick. Um, negative 1 and 1 1.5 would be maybe here. Again, much too high. 0, 3 would be maybe here. 1 and 6 would be, I'm going to estimate about there. I can't really see the grid lines on mine. And then 2 and 12 is going to be way up here. So my curve should end up looking something like this. And you can look at the graph on your calculator screen, but you're going to want to make sure that, especially since it says label at least four points, you don't have to give the actual coordinates, but I want to see that you've specifically located four points. Okay, so again, I went to my calculator, and I used the table. Best way to do one of these problems. Okay, um, the growth factor in the function above. So... Remember, these problems are always set up like this. y equals a, b to the power of x. Well, a is your initial value. b is what we call our growth factor. Okay, so we always want to look at that b value for our growth factor. If we compare that to the equation that we're talking about, which is y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x, my growth factor is going to be the one that's in the B position, which is the 2. Okay, so growth factor of 2. And then for letter C, is F an exponential growth or an exponential decay function, and how do you know? Well, first let me get rid of some of this stuff. Oh, didn't mean to get rid of that. Okay, sorry about that. So, again, I was saying there are two different ways that you can tell this. The first is just by looking at the graph, okay? And I would say something along the lines of... I could say this is growth because when I look at the graph, it obviously goes up to the right. Okay, so I can see that this graph here slopes up as you're going to the right. Or I could say that this is growth because the growth factor is larger than 1. And again, the growth factor is what we found back here. We found that our growth factor was 2. So you could do this based on the graph that you're seeing, or you could do it based on the question above where you found the growth factor. Either one of those will tell you that this is exponential growth. Okay, let's move on to the back. The first thing I want you to notice about number five is nowhere do you see the word continuously. So the word continuously never shows up, okay? This is not a continuous growth problem. In this one, we're wanting to use just plain old exponential growth, which was this function, y equals a, b to the power of x. Now, they're giving you some specific letters to use. Um, normally, I don't really care if you use those letters or y and x. Just make sure you're not trying to cram all of those letters into your equation at the same time. So they're telling us instead of y, they want us to use i to represent the total income. And then I'm going to go with my starting value. So right now I'm earning 2200 Now, the growth factor is where things get a little bit tricky here. Um, I'm losing 8% 
So that really means that to find my growth factor, I want to take 100% and subtract 8%, and I'm left with 92%. Then I want to take my decimal point and move it 2 to the left, and so now I know my growth factor should be 0.92. So these are the ones that you do have to either add or subtract from 100. And then normally we would put X up there. Again, I don't really care if you put X up there, but because this tells me to use D, that's what I'm going to use. So my final equation is I equals 2200 times 0.92 times D. Now for my next problem, it says find his estimated salary after one week of sickness. I guess I should have been more specific here. If we're calling this a work week, I guess I would probably put five days in for D. However, some people look at that and say one week must be seven days. As far as your review goes, I would take either answer. That's okay. So doing it the first way, with five days, I would say 2,200 times 0.92 to the power of 5 equals... Fourteen forty-nine and ninety-eight cents. Okay, so I would accept that answer. That'd be perfectly fine. If you did it with a seven instead of a five, well, let me see the best way to do this. So if you took this and did a seven instead, it would be. one thousand two hundred and twenty seven and twenty six cents so as far as this review goes if you got either one of these answers I want you to consider yourself correct okay and number six um, this again I don't see that word continuously anywhere so still we don't have continuously this is just a regular exponential growth problem so y equals a b to the power of x. Uh, no fancy letters in this one, so let's just stick with y. a is going to be my starting value, so 24,848. Now my growth factor in this one, this time I'm growing at a rate of 3.2% per year. So if I'm growing, I need to add that to 100. So 100 plus 3.2 gives me 103.2. And then move that decimal point, and I end up with a growth factor of 1.032. And then it's to the power of x, where x is just your years. So then it says, suppose this growth rate continues. By the way, continues is not the same thing as being continuously. So you're still not using the, the E formula here, just your regular exponential growth formula. If I'm looking for the year 2010, this started in 1995, so that's 15 years between those two. So I would take 24,848 times 1.032 for my growth factor to the power of 15 and pardon me a minute while I type this in and I end up with 39,800 and I'm going to yeah 855 this is people so we don't want decimals okay Okay, so hopefully that helps you. Feel free to email me tonight if you're stuck on anything, and we will spend just a couple of minutes going over this in class tomorrow before we begin. Good luck.